Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. I've just had confirmed news that a whole slew of watches from Patek's collection have just been discontinued. Many treasured examples and of course the entire Nautilus 5711 range. It's a Patek bloodbath. If you've got any of these babies on order and you haven't yet received it, it's time to pray. This week we are looking in depth at all the discontinued Pateks. What does it mean for the range and what's left? Let's do this. We all know that Patek Philippe announced in January 2021 that the Nautilus 5711 range was going to be cancelled and that 2021-22 was going to be its last year. And then we saw that end of line green dial last hurrah, the reference 5711 1A14, followed by that Tiffany numbered special edition in December 2021. Rumours had been circulating for a number of months that Patek was about to make a big cull to the range. And now it's happened. In January 2022, a few whispers sounded more credible. The Salmon Dial 5270 was mentioned, the Blue 5930 World Time, and possibly something to do with the Calatrava range. But right now, we are looking at a cull of 26 models, and I don't think anyone expected that. Before we get too deep into this episode, it's time for a quick wristwatch check. And under the blue jumper this week, I have the Corono Grand Hagane. This is the very latest release from Corono. It's just arrived from Japan and it's named after the high purity steel used to make samurai swords. As you can see, it's got a beautiful hand applied Urushi patterned lacquer dial. It features the Miyota 90S5 movement and it is a 37 millimeter steel case. In other words, it's classic Corono, and I'm sure I'll update you with a full episode on my Corono collection at some point this year. This week, though, we are discussing the mass extinction of Patek Philippe's Grand Complications, Complications, Calatravas, Nautilus, and 24, but not, interestingly, anything to do with the Aquanaut range. Not a single one of those is being discontinued right now. The first thing to mention, I guess, is that Patek does have a history of making big cancellations like this in order to make way for new models. You may have new movements coming through, they might look at different designs, or they might just be retiring models which have become less popular. So let's get straight into it and look at all of the models that have been And to make it easier, I've grouped them into the same categories that Patek uses on its website. Nautilus. The natural selection of the 5711 range has been well publicised and expected to end in February 2022 anyway. And true to its word, Patek has now removed the two green dial end of line Nautiluses, the 5711 1A14 and the diamond bezel 5711 1300 001. And now also the sumptuous brown dial rose gold 5711 1R has also been canned. This is perhaps one of the most underrated Nautiluses, and right now, thanks to it being discontinued, this is commanding an eye-watering premium of 10 times the asking price. But I mean, just look at it. It simply oozes class, this thing. The way the brown and the gold melt together in what is such a simple design. The 5711 1R truly deserves all of its plaudits. It is a stunning timepiece. So that's it. The 5711 reference is no more. Not the entire Nautilus, which is what a lot of people thought. In fact, as you can see here, we still have 27 Nautiluses in the range, including a whole suite of reference 7000 ladies models, three 5712s, my least favourite reference, and the 5726 in steel. And of course, these bad boys. This is the 5740, one of Patek's finest sports watches, the 5980s, and the range-topping 5991R rose gold blue dial model. That one would make Daddy very happy. But shock of shocks, Patek has also shuttered the 5990 in stainless steel. And this one really does rock my world because I actually have one of those on order. 
There is evidence to suggest that no one, not even Patek UK, expected this model to go, because it was actually part of the recent Patek Roadshow, where owners could try on all of the watches. What I liked instantly about this watch on the wrist is that unlike the extremely extravagant 5990 in rose gold, the steel version is understated, subtle, and actually has a real 70s vibe to it, which made it instantly attractive. Sort of like the standard blue-grey 5711. Will I get one now? Well, only time and a lot of prayers will tell. Complications. The 5930G is the World Time Flyback Chronograph. This one also came as a bit of a shock, although it was launched in 2016, so I guess we should have expected it. Personally, I much prefer this blue-white-gold version of the 5930 to the new green-platinum one. And although at the time of making this episode, it is still on Patek's website, the 5930G is most definitely for the chop. I actually mentioned this watch in a previous episode, as it was the first Patek I had ever tried on, and I actually do have one on order right now. Will it now happen? Am I fated to never have this watch? Frankly, the suspense is killing me. And look at this, another very familiar world time also goes this month, the 5231J. This is the World Time Rare Handcrafts, and it's a yellow gold cased watch that features the delicate enamel map of the world in the centre of the dial. It was released in 2019. It's an exceptionally hard piece to get, you had to be invited to get one of these, and now, after three years, it's gone. Also going are the final two remaining world times, the 5230R and the 5230G. Patek is perhaps wiping out all the older world times because it's going to bring them back with the new 28520 movement now seen in the platinum green dial. A big surprise is the loss of the 5905P. This is the flyback chronograph annual calendar and it's a handsome blue dialed platinum beast. A real sleeper in the Patek range, but quite quite beautiful. And it's also curtains for the twin rose gold annual calendar moon phases, the 5205R-001 and the 5205R-010. Two of the most handsome complications in the Patek range. The final complication watch to mention is the soon to depart ladies model. This is the diamond ribbon Joliet moon phases in rose and yellow gold. And these bling bling diamond bezel mother of pearl dial numbers are striking pieces, but due for the world, no more. Calatrava. A slew of Calatravas are being axed, but this is easily explained by the fact that the new 6119 range has been launched, and this is merely clearing out the old models. The 6119s feature their Clos de Paris hobnailed bezels, and Patek clearly wants to update the whole range. So it's Tata to the small seconds 5196G, J, R, and P. The diamond encrusted date sweep seconds 5297 is also on its way out. You'll note that the effortlessly elegant 5227G and R are both still in the range. 24. A quick word on the 24 range with the 7300-1200 in both silver and brown sunburst dial variations becoming former of this parish. The green dial 7300 has really given a shot in the arm to this range and it would be good to see Patek being a bit more playful. There's a real chance to attract younger buyers if they can find the right colours and ambassadors. Grand complications. And now it's time to discuss the losses in the real Masters of the Universe section, the grand complications. But perhaps the most shocking is the removal of what must be one of Patek's most perfect creations, the 5270p Salmon Dial. First shown in 2018, this mythical creature has appeared on the wrists of only the most refined of Patek collectors, and it is a genuine unicorn, something that few people can ever hope to see, let alone own. This is mine, and as you can see, when you see it in the flesh, it is an extremely special timepiece, one of the all-time greats, no question. That pinky salmon dial changes in the light and often appears almost copper in appearance. It's a chronograph perpetual calendar, so you've got moon phase, day night indicator, day, month, date, and it features the CH2935 PSQ movement that looks like a mini city when you view it through the transparent case back. In many ways, it's the perfect Patek Philippe watch. 
The colour, the balance, the detail on the golden opaline dial, the platinum case, matching brown alligator strap, it really is faultless. And now, it's gone. The 5320G Perpetual Calendar is another sleeper in the Patek range. Not one that many people ask for, but in the flesh, its vintage dial and syringe hands makes it a real stunner. I've come close to buying it on two occasions, but not actually gone through with it, mainly because it's quite expensive. But now it's been jettisoned, I may well regret that. Bye bye to those rose gold split second chronograph perpetual calendars, the 5204R011 and the 5204R1R001. The latter is on a striking gold bracelet, but at least you can still get that look with the remaining 5270 one r And the final two for the Patek firing squad are the mono pusher chronographs, the 5372P001 and the 5372P010. So there you go, the full list of discontinued Patek Philippe's, all in one place with a little bit of my thoughts added for good measure. Some big shocks and some obvious candidates for liquidation. Obviously this is not going to help the waiting lists or the poor suckers that are on the waiting lists, myself included. But one thing's for sure, what Patek taketh with one hand, they giveth with the other. And I'm sure in the future we can look forward to some new launches throughout the year. Thank you for watching this episode on the 27 discontinued Pateks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you like what I'm doing on the watchguys.tv channel, please subscribe, leave comments and likes, interact, get in touch. Let me know what you think of the episodes. There'll be another one next week.